Hello, welcome to lesson two, exercise number one. What we're trying to do in this exercise is write a program where in the main method we're going to ask the user to separately input two integers from one to 100. We're going to store the input into some variables, then we'll create a method that'll take as parameters these two values that we've stored and we'll use the method to determine which one is the larger number. So the purpose of the method is to figure out which of the two numbers is the biggest. The method will then return whichever of the two is larger to wherever it was called from and then we'll display a result to the user. So to, so to show you how it's supposed to work, we'll go ahead and run the application. It says please enter a number between 1 and 100. Let me go ahead and enter 50. And then it'll say please enter another number, again between 1 and 100, and we'll put, you know, 85. And then we'll go ahead and hit enter, and then it tells me you entered the numbers 50 and 85. The larger number is 85. So the point is we can do all of this stuff without methods. What we want to do is kind of use the method to compartmentalize the function of figuring out which is the larger number and use it in that capacity. So here we go. We import the Java Util Scanner uh, class there so we can read keyboard input. We create a new scanner object. We've been doing this forever. shouldn't look too odd. The name of our object is called input. Uh, and then we have a few variables that we've declared here. I'm assigning the number one to them because I just like to initialize my variables. Um, they're going to ultimately hold different values. Number one is going to hold the first number that we type in. Number two is going to hold the second number that we type in. And then the variable called larger number is going to hold the value of whichever one of these guys is bigger. And these are all integers because I'm asking for keyboard input in the form of an integer. Then I'm going to print out to the screen, please enter a number between 1 and 100. And this line here is reading the keyboard input. It's uh, reading and using the method next integer to read the next integer from the um, object that we created. We called it input. That's the scanner object there. So we're reading the next integer ready at the keyboard. We're assigning it to the variable that we've called number 1. So all we're doing is reading the input, assigning it to a variable. And then we print out another line saying enter another number and we're reading the next integer available at the keyboard. We're assigning it to the variable we call number two. So we're using these variables that we have already defined up above. Uh, and then here this line is focus on the right hand side for a second. We're calling a method and the name of our method is called number compare. And what we're doing is we're passing the two numbers that have been input from the keyboard, these two integers, whatever they are, we're passing it as number one and number two. That's These are two values that are going to be sent down to the method, and the method will operate on them, and the method will return back a value, whichever one's bigger. And we're so the, basically you can think of this whole entire thing as returning a value back, which, which will be whichever number is the largest that value will be assigned to the variable that we have called larger number. So what's happening is we're passing the two values down, some kind of calculation is happening, a result is coming back telling me which one's bigger and we're storing it here. Okay, And then we print out the final answer. You entered the numbers and then these are the numbers that we've entered. The larger number is larger num because this method has done the work. So you can read the main method here and know very succinctly what the program is doing without putting everything in the main method. We can compartmentalize the function of uh, figuring out which one is larger and kind of put that in another method down below and keep our main method cleaner. So now let's go down below and see what, what we're doing here. We define a method, public, static, I know we haven't talked about these words yet, for now just leave them there. But here we did have void in the previous methods we were talking about. In fact, you can see our main method, method public static void. But here, we want to return a value. We want to return a number back to the calling uh, place up here. So we're returning an integer. This will be the larger number. Uh, we define the method name here, number compare. And we have two parameters or arguments, you might call them, that are going to be used in this function. And we change the name. Up here we call them number one and number two and they're both integers but I like to change the name in my methods. Here they're still integers, number one, num1 and num2. They're both integers and they're going to basically be using the same numbers but it gets confusing if you have the same variables defined all over the place. So we'll just call this num1 and num2 and then inside here we're going to say well if num1 is greater than 
or equal to num2, then we're going to return the value num1. So then in that case, if number one was bigger than number two, then we would return number one up here as a result of calling this method, which will be stored here, and then the program finishes a computation or finishes execution. If this is not true, num1 greater than num2, then else means this is going to definitely occur if, if the if statement's not triggered, then we'll return num2. So this bit of code here is really just figuring out which one is bigger and returning that number. If num1 is bigger, we execute this and return num1. If num2 is bigger, we execute this and return num2. So we get to this line in the main method up here, number compare parentheses number one, number two. What happens is number one and number two get passed down to the method here. When we get into the method, number one gets cha changes its name to num1, so we can operate on it down here. Number two, the value of it, whatever it is, gets passed down here and we call it num2. We do that to keep things separate and to keep uh, yourself from being confused with having the same variables running around uh, in different places. Inside of this method, these two variables, num1, num2, are defined as integers. I can do anything I want with them. I can add them, divide them, subtract them, use them in if statements, use them in for loops. In this case, I'm just doing a simple if statement, and I'm returning the value of one of these numbers if it's larger, and I'm returning the other value if it's larger. Whatever number is returned is what gets stored in this variable, and that's going to be the larger number. Obviously, you don't need to do this method business for a simple program like this. We could just have it all up here, but it keeps it clean. It keeps things compartmentalized, and it's, it's a good introductory exercise in learning how to use methods that take parameters, methods that return values. Notice that we have int out here, integer. That means this method is going to return an integer uh, there, and that's how we define it here. I hope you've enjoyed this exercise. Your code is probably going to look a little different than mine. That's okay as long as the general idea is the same. That was all we're trying to do here.